You, you, you are now listening to the Project Kuwait. To the Project Kuwait. To the Project Kuwait. Where we stop at nothing to bring you the right facts on health, fitness, and psychology. Featuring some of the world's most experienced professional professions. So you can learn, live, and win. With your hosts, Meg, Dr. D, and Mandy. See, I don't like the wall because people get way too comfortable with the okay. wall. So first thing I do, I take people away from the wall. So that freaks them out even more. Ashtanga is the toughest uh, style in yoga. And it's where people get most injuries, by the way, if they're not doing it correctly. So I would tell people, get familiar with yoga first, train for it properly, and then go to Ashtanga. After I came back from my course, I said no. I was a bit afraid of teaching because I wasn't sure if I was teaching right correctly. And people should have a purpose before they start to teach. If you want to become a yoga instructor or CrossFit trainer or personal trainer, what's your purpose behind it? What's your project about? What's your product about or service? So I had to find my purpose. So once I found it, I didn't want to be selfish. Just share it. That's what that was the that was the main goal. Um, you need to find a purpose. You need to find a purpose of teaching. All this and more in today's episode. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the project. And I am joined with the yoga instructor. Yeah. Who I don't know her first or last name, but I do know your Instagram name. It's the same first name. It's, this, it's Shadow. Yes, and that's how you make me look like an idiot. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show and especially to talk about yoga. I think you were saying earlier that it's a very hot topic, right? I mean, is it boost? Is it booming right now in Kuwait? It's really boosting right now in Kuwait. Yes. And I think everybody wants to include yoga in their daily routine because if you do it correctly, it should complement like your workout and your daily routine. No, it's okay. With a big giant spotlight right on you. <laughs> yes. It's the first time I show up to something that I don't do any yoga flows or poses. <laughs> Just sit down and talk. <laughs> hey, that must be a relief though, right? Oh, and I show up with no tights. That's amazing. <laughs> and a dress. <laughs> so were you like, oh my God, today I don't have to wear tights. No, amazing. It feels so good. And I get to wear shoes. <laughs> yes, not barefoot. <laughs> do you, wait, but do you enjoy wearing shoes or do you enjoy being barefoot? With yoga. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, in general, in, in general, depends if I'm going out nice, dress up, I'd like to have some nice shoes on or heels. So are you a feet person or mm, no, not really. You're not, no. you're not like, oh, the feet have to be grounded. And well, it's nice if you're on the beach, on the sand. Yes. And if it grass, yeah, it's nice to get a feel of the environment around you right, so you can blend into it. Yes, I don't mind. But if I'm out in a nice restaurant or <laughs> on a date somewhere, I'd like to have some shoes on. <laughs> All right. That's, that's awesome. So you're not a crazy yogi. <laughs> All right. I eat meat. You eat meat. <laughs> I eat meat. We, we were just talking about that. So you eat meat. Do you eat beef? Yes. All right. And you eat chicken, obviously. Yes. And fish. Yes. Yeah. All right. And we were talking and about eggs. And eggs. <laughs> yes. And, and animal products. Milk, chocolate, name it. There we go. See, that's what I'm talking about. A <laughs> yoga instructor that actually eats meat, meat and not vegan. Not vegan. No. No. But when I went on the course, I had to be a vegetarian for a month to understand their philosophy behind it and why they exclude meat from their diet. Protein. How was that experience? I felt very drained, honestly. <laughs> I lost a lot of weight. Because I'm already slim, so I was slimmer. I felt lack of energy. Didn't focus so much the last couple of weeks. It was for like a full month. And I was never full. <laughs> I yeah. didn't feel full even after every meal. I'd still want. And I noticed that you eat more carbs once you're hungry because you can't go to the protein. You can't go to meat. So it was fun. It was a different, it's a different approach for things. But I would not be doing it for a while so the game changer effect didn't work on you nope <laughs> no <laughs> as, as we were just talking about that well it's probably because you were lacking iron vitamin b you were probably lacking creatine like those are essential things that your body needs i know I, it is it is i just it's their philosophy i respect it and it's their this is where they come from so i totally respect it and i had to follow it and it was a struggle but to go back to eating protein it was a struggle because uh, you would get bloated. Sorry, okay. you would get yeah. bloated. I, I had to force feed myself because I'm just not used to it for a month. 
change. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So no to vegans. Good luck going back to protein. We don't want you back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, all right. So you had to do that. And was that, you knew that going into the course, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah, it was part of the deal I had to sign on. <laughs> oh, wow. So what made you want to become a yoga instructor then? Because I mean, for me, I'd be like, dude, I can't have meat. I got to walk around barefoot all day. What's going on here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> How much time do you have for the story? <laughs> now, when I went on my course, it was, it was not intention of teaching. I just felt that a disconnection to the world and to things. So I kept researching. And I tried to figure out how to rediscover myself and connect back to things and people and earth, whatever it is. So I signed up for the course after asking around some of my friends. They went on, they went to this place for yoga. And as soon as I went there, I dropped my, the bus dropped me and I was there standing in front of a name, Vikasa School. And then I was like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? So... And then I just went to the room. I slept six in the morning. We had a class and I was there doing a yoga flow. I didn't know what was a downward dog, upward dog. What the hell am oh, I doing wow. here? Yeah. And uh, first week, it was nice. There's a lot of, I learned a lot of new things, spiritually, mentally. So the purpose of me going there was for the mental side and the spiritual side. Physically, I was already training, lifting weights, getting into the fitness field a bit but yoga was something that I would always stay away from classes and stuff yeah so for me to do a yoga flow for three hours by the way practices in Thailand or anywhere else in India so you, it's three hours so you did all you didn't go to classes before you never went to a class and they, is, they they don't know that until now <laughs> over but, there yeah that is awesome that's yeah. smart yeah, that's yeah, yeah. very smart because you weren't influenced by other trainers and the way no, no, they no. ran a class so to speak the reason was mentally i wanted to see what's behind yoga mentally and spiritually the physical part i knew i would get it the asana which is the flow the yoga flow i knew i would get it because i was already into fitness lifting so i said what's the big deal let's show up and do yoga flow uh, but i wanted to understand the philosophy behind it Okay, that's yeah. interesting. That's why I signed up for the course. That's in, that's pretty cool. That's yeah, actually yeah. really cool. I think the coolest part is that you weren't influenced by a class. You used to do it on your own and that you had that spiritual connection. What's the spiritual connection like? Because I've talked to a lot of people that have ex tried to explain it, that they just feel more connected with themselves going through a flow. I have my own definition about yoga. So there's the common, what is yoga? Okay. But for me, yoga is self-acceptance. Self-acceptance, really? Yes. So Elaborate. <laughs> what you reflect on the inside should reflect on the outside. So when you show up to class, people come into your, uh, as a trainer, as a yoga instructor. Yeah. So people come into your class, they have this negative energy all day. They, they don't know what they're doing. So as soon as you walk in, they feel my energy. Okay, there's self-acceptance. So they accept my energy. Yeah. That for me to do, be able to do that, I need to accept myself from inside. Yeah, that's understand. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This is my own definition about yoga. That's, that's pretty in depth. Now, when you get new students or new clients coming in and they're like, so what is yoga? How do you explain it to them? So one word, two words, self-acceptance. I don't use the, the because people need um, simplicity to it. Yeah. People need what's, what is it uh, in a simple word? And for me to be able to put you, uh, to train you for a headstand, I would say, I need to at least get to you mentally through your head. Because once your head is upside down, your body freaks out. So if you're not calm and you don't have a person you trust right next to you assisting you, you won't be able to, to do it. Yeah. So that's another thing that I do. So that's, so that's a pretty good approach because I do cross. Mm -hmm. So obviously handstand is something we, we do. You probably laugh at us and say they are doing it completely wrong and they're going to get hurt. <laughs> They've got scorpion legs and like, a lot of using the lower back. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. See, and that happens with me a lot. I use my lower back during a handstand walk. I've gotten better with it. Stabilizing. Probably your shoulders are just not. Yeah, really flexible. <laughs> probably some. Well, when you're walking, Mobile. <laughs> when you're walking 25 feet on your hands or 50 feet on your hands, you really don't care about what your shoulders are doing. No, no, yeah. It's like I want to yeah. get to the other line, but I've gotten better with uh, my handstand walks, and my lower back um, has felt a lot better lately. But 
that trust. When I see people that are like, oh, I'm afraid to kick up. I used to do gymnastics when I was a kid. So I did handstands, but that fear, what are some of the tricks that you use to get over, for clients to get over that fear <laughs> besides having someone they trust? Like what if they're practicing on their own? Would you say use a wall or how do you See, go See, I don't like the wall because people get way too comfortable with the okay. wall. Because when I was first taught inversions or headstands or handstands, yeah. they're like, okay, go to the wall and do it. I hate it. So first thing I do, I take people away from the wall. So that freaks them out even more. But I took a long time to understand how to assist people in these poses because that's all they need. Okay. Someone that they know that Shadwa is hands on. She won't let me fall. But sometimes I measure the fall and I make them fall so they can overcome their fear. That makes sense. Yeah. That does make sense. So basically you would teach them how to fall first. Yeah. For them to be able to do the pose without fearing it. Some of them I would make them, but, but I would measure it. So if they fall to the side, if I catch them, it would hurt them more. So I just let them yeah. fall into it. That's one of the things I do. I talk to them through it. What are you afraid of? What's wrong? Sometimes it's more mental than it is physical. Okay. Yeah, Sometimes there, we were never in a headstand. We don't know what we're doing. And some of them say, we don't know the measure, the risk. And they say, Okay, what if I do this and I fall like this? What's going to happen to me? It's just fear. So I tell them, use fear to push you. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. I mean, with my son with monkey bars, first thing I taught him to do was fall. Fall, yeah. Once he learned how to fall. That's it. He got it. <laughs> that's it. And it was like, oh, yes. it's that easy. I'm like, yeah, you just fall onto, you know, when you fall on the ground, make sure you just have your hands and fall so you don't hurt yourself. You measure the fall. Yeah. You make sure that he's not going to break or hurt I know. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> but there's always a 10% yeah. of injury. <laughs> there's that, always it's, it's there. always there you're right no you're right and my wife was like what are you doing I'm like look <laughs> let the kid learn how to fall she's like but from four feet up i'm like it's i'll kill you feet. later <laughs> yeah i was like you'll thank me later and sure enough he fell to the ground his feet hit first and then his hands braced down and he's not afraid anymore then he's not afraid anymore two days later he's going back and forth on the monkey bars <laughs> and it was like there you All go. Right. i know right yeah it's a good technique it, it is. It's it a is. good technique. You got some pretty good teaching approaches. Yeah, sure. So Thank you. what are some of the health benefits to yoga when you get people like myself and other guys who are bodybuilders, who have zero flexibility? I was just going to say, I get a lot of bodybuilders that compete. Last year, I got a couple. They were actually one of my best clients. So with these people is they lack mobility. So my approach with yoga, it's less flexibility, more mobility. Okay. So I would open up their shoulders, open up their hips. So they come back with feedback like our squats are better, our pull-ups are better, our deadlifts are better. So I try to complement these workouts. I get people with long jobs on the desk, uh, bankers, CEOs. These people have really lower back pain. So we try to release that. A little bit. So what are some of your methods for that? Because I sit sit behind a desk for eight hours a day and I drive for an additional three. <laughs> so I'm pretty much sitting 12 hours out of the day. And then I'm going trying to do a two and a half hour CrossFit workout. So like my shoulder mobility is shit. My range of motion is shit until I get an hour and a half to two hours into the workout. So what are some of the tips, health benefits that I could sort of practice during the day? What I was taught through lifting, lower back pain to activate the glutes. So I would use just a band to get the glutes working. Um, for shoulders, there are some workouts uh, for yoga, but I use them as mobility. I don't let them hold because it's so painful. If you have very tight shoulders, a downward dog. It's really painful. They don't enjoy the, the workout, the pose, and they're not doing it correctly. Yeah. So there is a different approach. I would have to demonstrate, but I can't do that right now because I'm sitting. <laughs> we're sitting. <laughs> All right. So that, that's actually a good point. I'm going to bring you back on the show and we're going to do like a live thing. All right. Can we do a live thing? Sure. And I'll, I'll go through a yoga flow. <laughs> yeah. That would and be great. I'll go through a yoga flow and I'll wear tights. I'll make tights. you look like a butterfly. I'll wear tights too. Thank you. No, I'm not wearing tights. <laughs> you can. You have I'll, to. I'll wear shorts with tights underneath. Is that a good enough deal? That's enough. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Sold. I, sold. All right. <laughs> Done. All right. And I won't wear shoes. Like, I'll definitely do a yoga flow because last time I did it was a couple of years ago. And 
I really wanted to get into it, but it was so difficult. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'm pretty strong, but it was just difficult. It sucks when because you don't we work know how on small something. muscles. Yeah. We work on because lifting makes you work on the big muscles. We work on the tiny ones. <laughs> and it's easier for me to overcompensate with the muscles that aren't active. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's why yoga was a lot. I mean, it was. And it's about the breathing also through the movement. Yeah. So if you breathe wrong, you're not really activating the small muscles that I'm talking about. Okay. So it's using your core with every inhale and exhale. So you really need to find a flow between the breathing and the movement. That's yoga. So how would the breathing go? Uh, it would show more when, when, when you try it, demonstrate it. Okay. Because it's just about, I feel like the breathing with your inhales and exhales, you use the force of the range and the movement. So it completely puts you, it, it helps you connect more to the mat and the moment because that's, that's yoga. It's uh, people say meditation. I need to sit down and focus. No, meditation is in everything we do. So if you bring yourself to the present moment right now on the mat, that's yoga. Okay. And then you practice the flow through it. I believe that's my personal opinion about it. It's just meditate, med meditating is, we do it in everything. It's just we don't dwell over the past and we don't overthink the future. It's just okay. now. Yeah, no, that makes, dude, that makes, that makes total sense. It's, it's your catharsis. It's whatever's cathartic for you at that moment. Um, it's to me, for, for me, it's going to play baseball or doing a CrossFit wad. That's my meditation. That's my release, so to speak. Yeah. So, I mean, now that we got into that, we talked a little bit about the bodybuilding and what are some of the common misconceptions about yoga? And you already talked about the flexibility and the mobility, but what are some of the other common misconceptions? I mean, guys, for instance, I'll, I'll tell you what guys will say. Oh, I can't do yoga. That's for girls. First thing. <laughs> or I'm not too flexible to do yoga. I believe also there is a third one where if you have an injury, go do yoga. I agree. Only if you do it correctly, especially with the lower back and the shoulders. You need to be very careful of the technique that you're doing in each pose that you choose in yoga. And flexibility comes with time. I can't tell you to do me a wheel pose and just bend your spine all the way back. That is a very uh, advanced pose. I would train you for it. I would give you more mobility, activate your muscles more. And through it, you'll get the flexibility you need. Okay. All right. That's pretty, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Now, when you talk about gaining that flexibility over time, what is the time frame for someone like myself for, you know, what are some of the benefits that I could see carry over into CrossFit, CrossFit? if I'm a competitive CrossFitter? Well, your headstands are going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> Look, handstands for CrossFitters are a joke. Okay. I don't, I don't even think they can actually hold a handstand. I think that's why you walk, walk through it. They can all walk. I don't think they can actually hold it. No. Really? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I, we're going to do that also. <laughs> I can hold it. I've learned how to hold it. But hey, I'm my wife. She used to practice handstands all the time. I'm but that sure was your yoga. your arms would be a bit out uh, and your legs would be just, you know, crossed. It won't be straight, nice posture. No, my posture is actually pretty decent. Okay. I'd like to my see handstand posture is not that bad. Okay. Like, and even my coach has said it to me before. He's like, oh, you, you know, you, your legs aren't too wide. I don't do the scorpion kick. And that's part of my it's problem. the first thing guys do in CrossFit, I think, in handstands is the Scorpio. Yeah. yeah and they no, drop. No, I, I don't even think I do that. Okay. I honestly, I think my legs are a little bit open, but I don't think I do the Scorpion that much. All right. We'll see that. I don't know. I'll show you the video after this. Okay. I'll definitely show you the video <laughs> after this. And then mm. you can, what are some of the other misconceptions that you've seen? Uh, let's see. Mm. It's a mental, mental side also. Uh, people find it very hard to connect to these poses and they don't understand, uh, they get, they just don't understand the concept behind it. That's a misconception also for them because they say, they show up for a first day in class and they're like, okay, we, that's not for us. We don't like this. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Try it for a couple of times. Give your commit to it for a couple of weeks. It's the same thing as workouts. Yeah. They go for the gym for first month and they don't see any weight dropping and then they leave disappointed people patient 
All right. So patience. <laughs> patience. Let's teach people a little patience. What is vinyasa? What are these weird names that I've seen? Vinyasa, it's just a, a yoga flow okay. that a yoga instructor would put together for a class. So it's called a vinyasa flow. Uh, Ashtanga is pretty popular too, but Ashtanga, it's, it's like a series. Okay. So you take it and you teach it. You don't improvise a lot. All right. So is it built up over time? Like you start with like level one and move yes. through to like level yes. eight. Okay. Power yoga, uh, we put together uh, because it would be faster. Okay. It would be a fast flow and it would, I w- it, it would have a little bit of core stuff. I believe. All right. So that's that's your CrossFit yoga right there. That's it's faster. Yeah, it's, it's like... fast. <laughs> I mean, people would, a lot of people would enjoy the power yoga because it's not slow. And then you have the uh, the slow breathing yoga. Uh, a lot of people attend these classes just to breathe and relax. Those were the ones that I used to go to, believe it or not. <laughs> did you like it? <laughs> yeah, I did. I actually did. It was like at the end when she'd be like, close your eyes and just, you know, think of nothing. Those would be like the most, re- that would be the most relaxing five minutes of my day. Really? Yeah. Okay. It was, it was definitely relaxing. I would last for an hour. That's it. And I would be pushing it because I like fast flows. Oh, really? I enjoy it. Yes. I would add a little bit of a five minute breathing and, and meditation towards the end of my uh, class. But um, I want people to leave classes um, with a good workout, sweat and uh, core is working, everything is activated. And then towards the end, I would take them through a nice, how to use their core with breathing and chest and how to inhale and exhale and then relax. So they would leave the class happy and satisfied. All right. Okay. So what is like, when you talk about the breathing, Mm -hmm. right? People like me, I don't know how to breathe. Mm -hmm. We got so used to breathing from our chest. Yes. Yes. So what are some of the cues you give people in yoga class so that they can kind of, because for me, one, one of the worst parts about yoga was the complication of breathing, you know, like, because it's like breathe this way. And I'm like, I can't breathe. Cause you're way. used to holding your breath with weights. Yes. You would inhale and then hold, uh, yoga. You need to, uh, Pilates also inhales and exhales. So you would inhale from your, uh, you know, chest take it all the way down to your core and then hold and then exhale using your core also so i i do believe most bodybuilders also and crossfit and people that lift they breathe so much from so much from their chests and um and hey some people in lifting also they they don't hold their breath yeah so that's true once i tell them because when you lift you hold your breath they're like no we don't do that i'm like okay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you should I, I <laughs> you know should. right because that's I, the way I was taught yeah yeah I never used to hold my breath until hey I became a power lifter and like I, w- I wouldn't hold my breath I just wouldn't take now I take a deep breath and brace a lot more it's just things that I've learned over the years too and uh, it's a huge oh, difference big jump. huge jump right huge jump in my squat huge yeah. jump we're talking a 25 pound jump in my squat there you go easy 25 pound jump I in my know squat. I didn't know that was the trick when I was taught I'm like oh okay so add more weight <laughs> I know right I know it's like now we're getting it's it's with I that's what I love about the internet I love it and I hate it because for younger people, that education is all at their fingertips. Mm-hmm. Where me growing up, it was like you were lucky if you got it in Men's Health magazine. Yeah. And even with that, it was like you were getting the boosted up steroid workouts. And it'd be like, yeah, you'll get this in, you know, two weeks. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's true. Just, I would take social media, I would take the positive side of it and just try to ignore the negative side of it (laughs) but how can you do that with with a novice person like myself with yoga okay i know nothing about yoga say i want to learn it the first place i'm probably going to look is instagram so what would i look out for to stay away from something that would hurt me and be detrimental versus something that would benefit me and help me on my yoga journey what are some of the red flags to look out for you mean an account or in general? In, in general, like things not would, to watch. I would say start with the basics. Look for basics. So what's your goal first of doing yoga? So I would say you CrossFit background and power lifter, uh, you would want more mobility. 
So you would look for someone that lifts and does yoga at the same time because this person would know what she or he is doing. I wouldn't choose a yoga instructor, pure yoga only background and just that this flows, nothing else because yoga itself is not enough. You need other uh, workouts with it. So I would look for that category. All right. Uh, if I just wanted more breathing and more spiritual spiritual and mental side, I would go for a person that's very pure yoga and just does um, breathing classes and yin yoga, slow uh, holding poses, stretching. So you just need to know what you're looking for. And most people don't. So once they come to my classes, I would say, I find them a bit lost. So I would try to talk to them. What are you looking for? So they would give me their goal. And then I would recommend, or I recommend these classes for you, or I recommend you sticking with me and help your workout grow, whatever you're doing. Is it, is it uh, CrossFit? Is it lifting? Is it an injury? So you, we, we direct also as a yoga instructor. Okay, that's pretty cool. I love that point where you said, only doing yoga is not enough. It's not enough, no. So now you're pretty jacked, all right? So you lift weights also. Yes. Now, do you do powerlifting or is it bodybuilding focused or have you ventured into CrossFit at all? <laughs> yes, yeah, stay away from it. <laughs> no, Thanks. CrossFit is not my thing, but I do lift. Yep. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I would say power lift. I just lift for the health. Okay, that's awesome. And uh, it's satisfying mentally. <laughs> so you like to lift heavy. Yes. Yoga. All right. That's pretty under cool. supervision. Under my supervision. trainer. With your trainer. <laughs> yes. Under not alone because you need to be careful with the techniques. Yeah. Yeah. Very but, careful with it. Uh, uh, <laughs> CrossFit. Yeah. Uh, you know, like sometimes. Actually, I posted a video. I think a week ago because I knew it would stir up. It would stir up shit. Okay. I mean, that's that's what I'm known for on this show is stirring the pot. Uh -huh. And it was me doing like a quarter squat. Or okay. three quarters. And why would that? <laughs> because I got the power lifters coming and saying, oh, you're not even hitting depth. And I, I said on there, I was like, hit a PR with decent depth, according to the guy to my right. And I got so much backlash. No, And they're okay. like, you need to hit depth. You need this. And my DMs were blowing up. And I was just like, dude, you don't need to de you don't need to hit depth every time. You can still gain the same benefits from quarter squatting like a lot of athletes do. LeBron James, so forth. Okay. There is carryover to it. And there was a study done in 2016 on athletes who were doing a three quarter squat versus a full depth squat and their vertical jump. I'm not a basketball player. <laughs> All right. Let me just put that out there. But my point was, I wanted to see how many know-it-alls would sort of jump on the bait that I threw out there. It was well, that's nice of having a, a connection to your account. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, it was a pain in the ass. Though. But isn't they always say with squats is drop the weight and go deeper with your squat? I honestly think it depends on the person. Like, if you, why would you squat through pain? But if you hit a point of pain. Isn't that technique? It could be technique or it could just be your bone structure. It could just uh, be. And I've had. A so bunch you would keep the knee at a 90 degree. Everyone squats differently. I think every human being is built completely different. Of course, everybody's on that anatomy. And I I've had countless physiotherapists on here that have said the same thing. Now, I could go to a full depth squat. I could do a Hindu squat with my legs together. But does that necessarily mean that's my strongest point because I'm hyper flexible there? No. You know, there's that fear factor when I am squatting of where are my points of pain? Let me stay away from it because I'm not going to get banged for my buck at this point. Mm. You know, if that makes any sense, mm -hmm. I can command it pretty well. The physical therapist, I immediately did have a physical therapist that sent me a DM saying, yes, everyone's built differently. Don't you shouldn't give a shit about what anyone's saying. And I said, I don't, you mm. know, clearly. But I just thought it was funny that trainers all of a sudden jump. Yeah, they attack to the. We know it all. You got to go to full depth. No, not in every single case. Um, you had a um, very interesting point. Everybody has his own anatomy. Same thing with yoga. My downward dog can be different than your downward dog. That doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. But looking at your anatomy and looking at your background, I wouldn't really focus on putting your, keeping your legs straight. So I would tell you, bend your knees a little bit because you should have tight hamstrings. It's not bad having tight hamstring. 
I keep my hamstring. I don't. I don't stretch my hamstrings so much because of, I do deadlifts. So yes, everybody has his own anatomy. Same thing. It goes with yoga. Yoga is customized as per your anatomy. So I agree with that. I like that point. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing with me. I, pre- <laughs> I, I, I really do appreciate that because I'm so sick of when I go to a class of trainers like, no, no, you have to do it that way. No. In, in yoga, I got that too, where it's like, no, no, you have to do it this way. But it hurts. Like it hurts, not a good hurt. I have to customize something around that. How do you see that? How can you pick that up with your clients? Can you pick it up based on their movement patterns of, okay, maybe this movement isn't built for him to necessarily do it exactly how it's prescribed? Um, it depends. Uh, so this is where I would talk more to the client. So what, what kind of training do you do? And some people can take it that I'm asking personal questions. I'm just trying to understand your background. So I, because I, I can see you going through pain, doing a downward dog or holding an upward dog or warrior one because they can see your hips are very tight. So I would walk through it and check, observe first class, and then maybe talk a little bit. And then if I ask him, if you're going to show up again to class, let me know, just drop me a DM if you want, if you want to work on some things and give me a background of what kind of training or workouts do you do. And then through it, and when he says, I lift, okay, makes sense. So you, your hamstrings are tight. What, what are you doing? Are you doing deadlifts? Are you training for something? And they send me more details about it. So I work closely with them. And some of them end up taking um, one-on-one yoga session. So because they see that they get good results. So I would take it from there. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Now, what are some of the biggest health benefits besides the mental health part of it, like physical health parts, like does yoga lower blood pressure, for instance? Like, does it, can you get those benefits from it? Less stress. Less stress. Less stress. <laughs> what about like cardiovascular? Can you? Yeah, through power yoga. My yeah. flows are pretty fast. So I do a little bit of cardio. Okay. So my hour is designed of uh, first 10 minutes of muscle activation. And then 20 minutes, I can take it up to 30 minutes of a fast flow. Or I can do a slow, slow pace, but very strong movements. So your breathing, you have to control your breathing. So it's sort of a, um, it gives you a good workout. And then through it, I take you into stretching and breathing and Shavasana. Everybody loves the Shavasana. It's a sleeping pose at the end. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's my five minutes at the end where I could close my eyes. And just Everybody think of loves nothing. that. <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're like, okay, Shavasana now. I'm like, yes. Okay, sleep. <laughs> yeah. So now what would you say to someone like me to come to one of your classes? Because I'm still a bit fearful. I'm still a bit like on the side of... So I would I... trick you into telling, uh, advancing your handstand and then you would get interested. Oh, there we go. There you go. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm coming next class. I'm registering. So, so how could I advance my handstand? I'm trying to walk up the stairs <laughs> doing a handstand walk. Let's work on the posture and technique. And then you can go ahead and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to skip that. <laughs> or splits while you're at it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that actually might help me balance. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe the, I almost said CrossFit community, the yoga community here in Kuwait? Because it's evolved over the last four or five years, I would say. It evolved so much in the past couple of months, I would say. Really? Yeah. Oh, wait, I have a better question for you. Sorry. I, this just popped into my head. What are some of the crazy modalities that you've seen popping out of yoga right now? Like there's the aerial yoga, uh-huh. which I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Like, come on, they weren't not, doing this 50 years ago. No, they weren't doing it. I'm not sure where it came from. Honestly, I tried it, but I, look, I respect people that do it, but I did not really enjoy it. It's, it's a fun class. It's a different kind of pace of yoga. I wouldn't do it to, for results. I wouldn't do it to get something out of it, to enhance my workouts, to, I wouldn't do it. I tried it a couple of times, but no. <laughs> just by looking at your face so it's gimmicky <laughs> all right you don't have to say it i said it for you <laughs> i didn't say anything you didn't you didn't I say didn't a word say anything the people yo- i did not say anything he said it <laughs> yeah. the, the yoga community will not hate you they will hate me that's fine because <laughs> like i mean when i looked at when my wife was like yeah i'm gonna try yoga uh aerial yoga it's like, fun it's fun um i was like dude they weren't doing this <laughs> they know. like they weren't you know they look weren't. ashtanga if there people uh 
really love yoga, I would always recommend them to try. Ashtanga is the toughest uh, style in yoga. And it's where people get most injuries, by the way, if they're not doing it correctly. So I would tell people, get familiar with yoga first, train for it properly, and then go to Ashtanga. So how would they train properly for it? First? Know their alignments, know their poses. And because it's very, it's jump back into downward dog, upward dog, handstand, and then do that. Oh, so okay. you need to be very fast, yet good with. So that's a tough yoga. It's tough. So, all right. So if I want to start yoga, I would start with vinyasa first. Yeah. Just start with basic, basic flow. Okay. So vinyasa into. Power yoga, maybe. Power yoga. Mm -hmm. and, and then it just stay there a couple of. A good year, <laughs> a good year, because uh, get you uh, someone that knows the alignments of warriors, their upward dog and downward dog, getting the mobility, because if you're not doing a downward dog correctly, your shoulders are going to be more tight. Uh, okay. Because I went through that. I went, I suffered. <laughs> All right. Okay. Because I was trying to find a balance between lifting, because I love lifting and yoga. So we went through a lot of challenges, me and my trainer. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. My hamstrings were too flexible. Uh, so my quads were too tight because of my posture. Mm -hmm. I have a strong arch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very challenging. Very challenging. So I would say get you someone that knows what they're doing. So what are some of the things that you did to overcome these, these challenges? I wouldn't, for example, my hamstrings. Uh, I don't stretch them out that much. Quads, I do. I, I have to because uh, it's usually very tight. Seems like my problem. Like my quads are always tight. I'm it's always because like, of the lifting. <laughs> it sucks, doesn't it? Like I always see like I'm in the office talking to like one of one of the guys I work with and I'll have my leg. We're doing something like, wrong. Stretch behind me. <laughs> and he's like, why do you have your legs stretched out the a window? So I'm like, dude, my quads are tight. And he's like, you're weird, dude. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so, you love me. You still love me. I know. That's what I, that's, I know. He's like, yeah, you're, you're the weirdest person in here because I'll like grab my desk and I'll like, ha you know, have my arms behind my back, stretching out my shoulders. What are some of the challenges that you had? More uh, challenges. Uh, you know, like the tight hamstrings, ooh, the quads. Core. Okay. Core. So I would show up because we would all do these back bends. So, what does back bends do? It tell, the core is not locked. Yes. So yeah. I thought the core is not locked. That's it. The core is working. Yeah. No. So we had we went through this phase of I'm too mobile with my lower back. Okay. So that would cause my core to be very weak, lower abs especially. So that's one of the challenges. I always have to remind. I, I don't do a lot of back bends, honestly, because it's just the stretching the hell out of your spine <laughs> yeah i can imagine because it's all the way and i'd like some core to be tight all the time and engaged that makes sense that definitely makes a lot of yeah. sense now so the community here in kuwait mm. we, we were getting on that yeah I, I we, we got off and on yeah, I, 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 I suck at that by the way sometimes i'll like go all over the place <laughs> it's okay it seems like today's one of those days <laughs> but it's too early <laughs> i know right i know and the thing is, I was podcasting last night at nine o'clock. No way. So I literally went, went to bed, woke up. And came back. Came back. <laughs> I and got here like, at nine. Yeah, no, podcasting yeah. hard this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so now the CrossFit community, the uh, yoga community. CrossFit community is amazing. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> no, but is it boosting? It's boosting a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, the CrossFit community is great. It's jumping up here in Kuwait, which is amazing. Okay. For some of the right reasons and the wrong reasons. Um, I want to know the wrong now. <laughs> the wrong is, I think there are too many fitness enthusiasts trying to become athletes, mm. such as myself. Like, I try to be an athlete, but I love to compete. That's just how I was born as a kid. You love the challenge. I do. Yeah. I do. Even if I'm going to get my ass kicked, I'm like, all right, I still want to join this competition and see where I stand. But I think it's getting to the point where now we have too many athletes and coaches and less uh, clients. If that makes any sense. It's kind of like you guys in yoga right now, right? So you get these people coming to class and they're trying to give you, no, I do it like this. Okay, yeah. cool. No, you're going to do it my way. No, but I think this is right. But I, I'm going to become a yoga instructor. And they're like, oh, I already got my certification. I, I bought it online. After a couple of months? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do. So, and you're probably like, dude, I went to a whole thing for a month. Yeah, and I took like, after I came back from my course, I said no. I was a bit afraid of teaching because I wasn't sure if I was teaching right correctly. And people should have a purpose before they start to teach. If you want to become a yoga instructor or 
CrossFit trainer or personal trainer? What's your purpose behind it? What's your project about? What's your product about or service? So I had to find my purpose. So once I found it, I didn't want to be selfish. Just share it. That's what that was the that was the main goal. Um, you need to find a purpose. You need to find a purpose of teaching. That is absolutely amazing. That's so true. That is so true. And that's why a lot of teachers become teachers because they want to have a purpose like that. Or at least a lot of teachers that I've talked to. You know, mm. I'm talking like normal school teachers, not you know, the fitness. Teaching teachers. is another skill, by the way. It is. That's true. That is teaching very is true. another skill because you need to be able to connect with the person in front of you mentally. And some for them, me talking about yoga, it's, it might sound gibberish for them. So I need to be able to understand them in order for them to understand me. That's another skill that I had to learn. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's pretty cool. So speaking of connecting, how can people connect with you? Easy. <laughs> Very <right>. easy. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> Just listen. <laughs> no, no. I, I do that for them. Okay. I do that for them because uh, I like people to take a break when they come to my classes or oh, train with cool. me. So I make it easy for them to understand me. All right. That's awesome. And how can they connect with you online? Like, do they just DM you? I was going to say, what box do you work out of? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can tell I have a lot of CrossFit, CrossFit people on I think this, this is what you've been doing all week. It's I not know. podcast. <laughs> I know, right? How can they connect with you? And what gym do you work out of? Or what shaman? Well, what are they called? Studio. Call Studio. There Studio. We go. I'm like, shaman. <laughs> you're probably like, all right. Is it like dude, a sala? What is uh, it? I, I know. You're like, this dude is definitely a CrossFitter. If he said shaman, that's... <laughs> That's like an American Indian thing. <laughs> so. so I teach at Daratma Studios. That's uh, in Chab. Okay. Uh, most of my classes are there. I used to teach in a couple of places, but now it's just one place. I give private also. People find it more beneficial to take private with you. You used to go to the borough, right? I taught there a couple of classes. Yes. Yeah. I remember seeing your name there a couple of classes. Yes. I also. taught yeah. there. I was just, uh, yeah, I a couple of years ago, was it? Two years ago. Yeah, that was the first recommendation I had for you. Oh, really? Someone was like, oh, you need to go try yoga with Shadow. And I was like... Uh, okay, I, I, who's Shadow? I, 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 like, right, who's she? I don't know who... I, was yeah. like, I just got introduced to yoga two weeks ago and I didn't even want to do it. My, I mean, my cousin, mm. she booked a yoga instructor to come to the house and she was like, we need six people. And hey, at the time was like into yoga. Mm. And so was my cousin. Mm. Uh, I was the sixth person. I was like, all right, fine, whatever. That's another good thing about yoga. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. You can yeah. do it anywhere. And it's for everybody. And you don't need anything. Uh, just a mat. That's or it. you can just use the sand or the grass. It's going to be very hard. <laughs> but yeah, it's you can do it anywhere. So if you do yoga without a mat, like what, how hard is it? Oh my God. Ah. Uh, because I did a lot of, most of my shoots, I do them by the beach on the sand. If you don't really are comfortable with falling first, okay. that's going to be a problem. And it's just very hard to do a handstand or a headstand on sand if you're not, if your core is not that strong. Okay. And Shadwa, can you just headstand on that rock right there on the corner? Okay. <laughs> what? The, you know, the rocks at the, at the yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, just, just do a back bend right here. We're just going to get the shot. Hold for one minute. Okay. <laughs> My back is completely fine in this. <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't recommend beginners or at least intermediate. You have to be advanced. Awesome. Because I don't want to go. What I went through, I, I would not recommend people to go through. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. definitely, I'll definitely listen. But it's to nice that. to do on grass, sand. It connects you to the environment around you. Energy. All right. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the project. Thank you for having me. We definitely really appreciate it. And we'll definitely bring you back on. And we're so doing, I'm so coming to one of your classes and doing a yoga flow. Please. I mean, we can we take do, a video of that and we, we share 100, it? hundred <laughs> percent. Share on your CrossFit account? A hundred, a hundred percent. We will share it on the projects account. <laughs> All right. And I'll, I'll share it on my account too. And you could, you could literally, I, I bet you, if you get my shoulders to open up, and you, if I can get into a good Ooh, front squat. Oh, that's a challenge. Okay. Right? If I'm I can taking... get my elbows up. Up. Okay. For clean. Give me a couple of months. You'll probably get a couple of good clients. <laughs> cool deal. Because when I clean right now, like I'll get the bar up to here and my elbows are still pointing at the ground. So you really need them all yeah, up here. Yeah. So okay. it's pre pretty much through the lats and stuff, but. 
All right. You'll get some phone calls after that. If you can, if, if you I can, can do that. Yeah. If you could do that, if you could get me to do a proper clean, you'll get some phone calls. <laughs> People will be like, she's a magic worker. <laughs> really? Done. I'll take a deal. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. That's so good. Thank you so much Thank for you coming for on the show. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. You can also find us on Instagram at The Project Kuwait. Thank you, and join us next time.